Now let's look at uh, the PI regulator tuning. So we recommend a sequence of the steps for tuning the PI parameters with the current regulator, the observer and observer regulator, speed regulator and other. So let's begin with the current regulator. You can find it in the uh, monitor mode on the first advanced page and uh, it's depicted in the uh, red uh, shape. So how to check that the current regulator is set properly? What do we need for checking the current regulator operation? The duck output is the answer. Then we need the oscilloscope and the current probe. The useful thing is that we fix the rotor by hand or by fixing the load. We apply a unit pulse current signal and observe the curve of the current. So how can we do it? We will come to the monitor and uh, we will set the KP and KI initially of, to zero on the ID PI regulator. We will set up the startup table like depicted on the bottom of the screen and launch the motor. Then we can see the properly set up current regulator with the oscilloscope on the current probe and on the duck outputs. There are sharp edges and fast reaction of the current reading. If the current regulator is set improperly, we can see several different phenomena. If it's under-regulated, the current readout will have a significant delay. This is the left picture. The right picture shows when the current regulator is over-regulated and uh, oscillates. So for the first part, increase the Ki parameter and in the second, decrease the Kp and increase the whole Kp slash Ki ratio. If we don't fix the rotor, we can still observe the proper setup of the current regulator, but we will see the current distorted by shaking of the rotor. Next part for the tuning, it's our used observer, Luenberger observer. How it's work? It's work uh, that uh, uh, in, in the input has a bus voltage applied uh, a vector, uh, voltage vector in PWM and uh, also read it back uh, uh, currents. Uh, from that, uh, the loopback system uh, with some correction uh, parameters, uh, C2 uh, and uh, uh, C1, uh, uh, reconstruct the back EMF uh, signal. And uh, through, through that uh, by reconstructed signal, we can reconstruct uh, speed and uh, angle. Tuning of the observer is as well available in the monitor mode. And uh, we can see the setup in the top right corner of this dialog box. There are uh, two very interesting or three very interesting values, the observer C2 parameter, which is equivalent to the G2 we spoke about uh, previously, and the PLL uh, for the speed reconstruction, which is a PI regulator with the KP and KI parameters. So let's check whether the observer is set properly. What we need, again, the DAC output and the oscilloscope. And uh, now we need to set the DAC output uh, channels 1 and 2 to the observer back EMF alpha from the PLL. 
and uh, the second one as a became a beta. So if the observer uh, gain C2 is too high, this makes the speed reconstruction a little bit noisy because the bandwidth is uh, very high. So it may happen that it uh, never recognizes the motor operation as reliable and we finish with the startup failure or the speed feedback failure. So what we need to do right now, we can decrease the original observer gain C2 by successive steps divide by 2, by 4, by 6, by 8 or even more. Additionally, we can as well enlarge drive parameters and uh, sorry, uh, enlarge the variance threshold in the drive parameters speed and position feedback management dialog box so that uh, the motor locked uh, is still possible to detect but it's less demanding which means for the PLL mode up to 80% for the variance threshold and up to 400% for Cortic. How to tune observer uh, through the duck output and now you see a nice picture from the oscilloscope and uh, you see noise, noisy back EMF. Uh, how we solve this issue? We have to change some parameters. Uh, in this case it's good to reduce uh, C2 parameter and uh, you see that uh, signal it's uh, without the noise. So the solution was to decrease the C2 parameter. Okay, uh, there can happen that the uh, speed reconstruction PLL, KP and KI parameters are too high. And you can recognize this situation during low speed operation on the measured uh, speed chart. The solution is again similar to reducing the C2, but uh, decrease the KP and KI parameters, both of them successfully by the steps divide by 2, by 4, 6 and 8. And the test for the highest one, which begins to be reliable. Now you see signal from the, from the plot window in the speed and you see that uh, the speed reconstruction is not uh, well, it's uh, shaking around uh, some, uh, some value. How we solve it? We reduce uh, the KP uh, parameter and you see that the uh, uh, result is better. If we reduce also the KI parameter, uh, then we see that uh, uh, there is only a few peaks and uh, reconstruction is smooth. Okay, now let's talk about the speed regulator. It's set up. Uh, is uh, in the middle of this window and it allows you to achieve a given speed, the target speed, within a preselected duration. When the motor spins and we click exec ramp button, this speed will be reached after the setup duration. So let's see how we can check whether the speed regulator is uh, uh, set up well and uh, we can do it directly in the motor control workbench monitor mode. Initially, we will set the speed ramp with a zero duration and a given tar target speed. When the motor uh, starts, it will stabilize at a value and we need to generate a speed step. So we will uh, do it by sending the speed command with the exec ramp button. The speed change shall be visible in the plotter. In the red color it's required speed, in the yellow color it's a measured speed and reaction for the required step. This is the setup of the properly set speed regulator. However, if we see artifacts like this with the over and undershoot, this means that the regulator is over-regulated. 
in such case we have to decrease the ki second case it's uh, that uh, we have under regulation uh, it's uh, not a fast reaction and uh, limiting in the, in the uh, long time and for that we have to increase ki parameter 